serve. I serve. Last verse. Time is filled. Time is filled with transition. No. Yes, hold, hold to his hand. 
God's unchanging hand. You just hold, hold to God's unchanging hand. Just hold. Trust in Him. unchanging hand you just hold hold to God's unchanging hand you just feel you just hold it's a good one when your journey to God you what have been true fair and bright your home in glory yes your enraptured soul will view but what are we gonna do meantime oh God changes his home hold to God's unchanged One more time. Well, you just hold. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to God's. just getting started. Amen. Oh my, 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 my. Oh, what a blessing this morning to be together. You must be some Easter people. Amen. Because we can feel your joy. The joy in serving a risen Savior who's in the world today. Amen. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. And yours too. What a blessing. What a blessing on this day to come together for this is the day that the Lord has made and we are already rejoicing and we are glad in it, amen. Welcome one and all to this worship experience. This must be the Antioch Baptist Church. It must be. Who else starts this fast in the spirit but Antioch Baptist Church, amen, comes in the door with smiles on your faces and a joy just in seeing the light of Christ in everyone's face. What a blessing. Surely the Lord God has brought us together for a time such as this. So let us continue to prepare our hearts and our minds to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness together this day. 
What a blessing that I see that folks have come from near and far, from right down the street, right down the block, amen, and all the way from Hopewell Junction, amen, and all the way from North, South and North and East and West. What a blessing that our paths intersect right here in the house of praise and worship this morning. So let nothing hinder you, whether you are at home, sitting on your chair, whether you are down in Baltimore, hello, Mrs. Wynn, amen. Whether you are on, on the West Coast, God bless you, Laura, amen. Whether you're in the South, all y'all in North Carolina, Georgia, and South Carolina, come on, let's praise the Lord together this morning, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Let me invite us to prayer. We always begin our worship service with a prayer inviting and being aware of God's spirit and presence. And I'd like to pray a portion of Reverend Dr. Diane Moffitt's prayer as our invocation this morning. Let, let every heart pray. Divine creator, we welcome you into our sacred space. With open hearts, we, we usher in your presence. We usher in your presence and we await the movement, the activity of the Holy Spirit. God of all, be pleased to abide with us and abide in us. Receive our adoration, our praise this day, we pray. Bless, heal, and deliver, and set free. May your people experience your love and your mercy, your grace and salvation, and your peace this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Indeed, we are blessed. We don't take it for granted at all that each and every one has tuned in or has joined in, has gathered together in these moments of prayer. We are excited that you have chosen to worship at Antioch and with Antioch on today. And I know that there are many people who are still traveling from Easter break or some will say spring break. I say Easter break. Y'all say resurrection break or resurrection Sunday break. Amen. <laughs> We're praying for them as they are traveling, but what a blessing that we are together. Amen. We have some new friends among us. We don't call them visitors. We say new friends. So new friends, we, we're, well, we're, looking, we're excited to, to welcome you. We're looking forward to talking with you at the close of the service. Now, you can help us. The ushers gave you a welcome card, I hope, as you came in. And if you would, please, at some point during the service, fill out that card. When we pa pass the offering baskets, if you'll put the your card in the offering basket, then we'll be able to connect with you in the days and weeks to come. For those of you who are online, you found our website, but if you go all the way back up towards the top, look for that yellow banner and click on virtual bulletin. Then the virtual bulletin will open up on your screen and you'll be able to follow along with what we believe is just a suggestion guide for our worship service because the Holy Spirit guides us, amen. But we look forward to worship. Jesus in me, the Jesus in you, stories and stories and hey, brother Mitchell, I see you. Stories and stories of love. Jesus in me, loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me. Jesus in you, the Jesus in me, loves the Jesus in you, stories and stories and stories and so easy to love. Amen, amen, amen. Somebody special is back from Jamaica, amen. 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 What a blessing that we can come together. Amen. I missed you over this past week. I was down in South Carolina with my mom. She sends her greetings. Hi, mom. She sends her greetings. Amen. Amen. But, but I saw so many people posting about the rapture this week. Oh, my goodness. All of a sudden, it got real, real for folk. Amen. And all it took was a small little earthquake. Amen. The ground shook and people said, oh, oh, I'm not sure if I'm ready. Folks started talking about getting ready. Amen. 
They started talking about the eclipse coming past, and folks said, uh-oh. So we get an earthquake and snow in April and, and an eclipse coming. Oh, surely the time must be drawing nigh. <laughs> Amen. I, now I'm chuckling about that. But also, we know. We're coming to a time of prayer, but we know. We know that just as we were kind of rejoicing about the good news that Jesus is soon to come, there are others who are reaching out more out of destitute being destitute and desperate. Some are stretching out and reaching out for hope. Some are seeking help. Some are seeking deliverance from cycles of violence in their lives that has been there for generations in their families, in their, in their countries. Some are seeking a break from cycles of war and devastation that's been their lot for as long as most can remember. Some are seeking a way out or the financial distress that they were born into and they haven't been able to escape. Amen. For others, it's, it's hopelessness or meaninglessness or despair or loneliness in their lives. Some others are seeking out, they're looking for guidance and for healing and for hope. And we need to pray. We need to pray for ourselves. We need to pray for others. We need to call on the name of the Lord frequently for ourselves in our situations and for others. We need to pray for our children. We need to pray for our teens and our young adults and our elders. And so let's together call on the name of the Lord Jesus in prayer. We're going to sing there's something about that name and then Sister Jennifer David is going to come and stand behind this pulpit and offer prayer on our behalf. And let's pray together. God hears and God answers prayer. Amen. Master, Savior, whoa, oh, like the fragrance after the rain.
kingdoms shall all pass away. But there's something about the name. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, we gather here together in your name to give you thanks, to give you praise, and to give you honor. Let us use today's worship service to worship you. Let us use this worship service to fuel our batteries so that during the week your light may shine through us, so that those around us may see you in us. Let us make sure that in everything that we do and say, it's through you. In our joy, in our sadness, in our anger, and in our impatience. Let us, even in our arrogance, Throw that away and use humility. Yes, Lord. Let us keep our gaze trained to you and not be swayed. Yes. Let us know what is you and what isn't. Yes. And let us continuously rejoice in your name, yes. in your love. Yes. Thank you, God, for all that you've done and yeah. all that you are doing. Yes. And even if you did nothing else, it's already enough. Yes. And thank you in advance for what we already know you will do. And I ask you, Lord, that your presence washes over us and cleanses us. But not only that, that it fills us so that there's no room for anything but you. Let us have discernment and know exactly what is you, and let others know and see you in us. And in your name, in your son Jesus Christ's name above all names, in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Oh, I pray and I pray, I pray all night long, I pray and I pray till I found the Lord, and yes, my soul couldn't be tempted, yes, my soul, yes, my soul, until I found the I prayed, I prayed all night long. I prayed and I prayed until I found the Lord. Yes, my soul couldn't be. Yes, my soul. Yes, my soul couldn't be contented until I found the Lord. I cried, I cried. Yes, my soul. Yes, my soul. Oh, until I, I moan too. I moan and I moan. Oh, yeah, until I found. And yes, my soul. Yes, my soul. Yes, my soul. Until I found the Lord. I prayed, I prayed, and I prayed. I prayed all night long. And yes, my soul. Oh, yes, my soul. My soul, yes, until I found the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Jennifer. We thank God for the move of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. In our amen, midst. Amen. Amen. At this time in our service, on the first Sunday, we have the time of recognition of birthdays and anniversaries, and then we have our time for the offering. Um, but I'm going to add something additional in this moment. 
I looked over when a young man came in and I said, how is it that Colonel John Wedges is home? He's supposed to be in Florida. I should say recently now retired Colonel John L. Wedges, amen, amen. So what a blessing to see him. And I, 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 I love confession. I, I, he looks so good and, and being retired, I said, let me make sure that's not a John lookalike. And I said, no, 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 that indeed is our John, amen. And so I just wanted to offer him and, and ask him uh, in his own way, just to take a few moments to bring greetings because we are just rejoicing, sir, in you. And what a blessing with this wonderful surprise that you are home to, uh, and with us in worship this morning. So if you would, please, where, forever you, from wherever you'd like to speak. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. First, give an honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Give an honor to Pastor McJunkin, um, to my Antioch family. Uh, give honor to you, and it's just glad to be home. And um, so tech, I had my retirement ceremony a couple of weeks ago. I'm not officially retired till 1 June, but this, I'm enjoying it. You see all this hair on my face. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it early. But I, I really, I wanted to come here because I know everyone couldn't come to the retirement ceremony, but I had to come back because I, I just publicly wanted to say thank you. Um, because I couldn't have made it through the 30 years in the military if it hadn't been for what my Antioch family did for me. And um, my mom, her favorite verse is Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way that they should go. Um, and I was trained here. And, and so, you know, a lot of folks may not remember Miss Reeser or Miss Rudder, um, you know, Mr. Gale. Uh, it just uh, it, tons of names, and yeah. and if, if it wasn't support directly for me, it was support for the family. You yeah. know, if you took care of my mom or my little sister or my brother, it, you know, it, it meant meant so much. And when, when I saw the video that y'all sent, and it was great, and so I wanted to talk about one of the people in the video because I lost it when I saw her. But I, I think it's a scholarship committee. So when I was in school, they would send little card and they'd sign it and be a little, little spending money in there. I'm like, oh yeah, this is good. <laughs> and then as I got older, I got out of school, you know, it was just a card and the signatures, you know, everyone just signed it. And I was like, this is nice. And I kind of think, hey, I'm, I'm kind of a man now. Why are they still sending me a card? But then I went to Iraq for the first time and then it was a care package. And I was like, oh, and, and it blessed everybody in the office because I shared everything that you all sent and stuff. And then this, this last time that I was in Iraq and I was in Kuwait, you all sent, um, it was a card, but everyone wrote on sticky notes Bible verses. And it was like every day, it was kind of like a daily Bible reading for me. And so I just truly, truly appreciate that. And so the one person, I'm going to start crying, I know, but Miss Harper. So Miss Harper was our Sunday school superintendent. She never taught me in Sunday school. I don't know if she was still living here when I graduated from high school or not, but you know, she, she moved down to Virginia. She always was one to encourage. She pushed me. Now, she literally pushed me. She'd do her hand this way. She pushed me right there in her shoulder blade to make sure that I spoke, to make sure that I volunteered to do things. And I'm 52 years old, and I still have tears in my eyes for what she did and how she encouraged me. And I just want to tell you all to continue. You don't know how just a little bit of encouragement. She never went to our house. She never went to a family function, but just on a Sundays and some Saturdays, the encouragement that she gave me pushed me through. And so I hope that you continue to train your youth. You continue to encourage and push them because those just small little things go a mighty long way. I love you all. I have some stuff that I'd like to give out at the end of service. I got to run to my car to get some more things, but I, I just truly, truly say, say thank you and God bless you. bless you. Thank you so very much. Amen. 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 Now, I don't want it to make it seem anticlimactic, but we, I move on from, thank you, from that.
just to ask, is anyone celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week? If so, would you raise your hand that we might acknowledge you? We try not to miss a week because everyone is special. Amen. Oh, 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 I see a hand. Praise God. Sister Sheila, God bless you. Amen. 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 Wonderful. We thank God for you. What a blessing to have you here on the week of your birthday. We pray that you just know and feel the love surrounding you and uplifting and encouraging you. Thank you for being the blessing and the light that you are to many. God bless you with many, many more. Amen. 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 My sisters, my brothers, I, I've got mine ready. Do you have your tithe and offering ready? Amen. Let's, the ushers are already in place. I tell you, they're already back there smiling. And I tell you why they smile. I've told you this before. Let me say it one more time. They smile because they're the first ones to get an opportunity to put their offering in the basket. Amen. So they've already given their offering. Let's prepare now to share our tithes and our offerings that we might be a blessing to someone else. Those who are our new friends, now's the time to put that welcome card as they come now and as they pass the baskets. Amen. God bless you. As they are doing so, let me share a couple of opportunities for service and for study and for fellowship that are coming in addition to our regularly scheduled meetings and rehearsals. We want to encourage everyone to continue to lift one another up in prayer. Continue to remember our prayer list. Also, this week, we start a new Bible study class, amen, on Wednesdays. Amen. So Wednesdays at 7 on Zoom, we are starting our foundations class in Christianity. So we're going to look at some of the basic beliefs and practices of what it means to be a Christian. Amen. We're going to look at our church history and quite a bit more. This class is going to go from April the 10th all the way through mid-June. So please make sure that you are a part of that. On this coming Saturday at 1030 on Zoom, we will have our Ministry Council Planning Conference. That's for each and every officer, every member of the diaconate, every officer, every ministry team leader. Saturday from 1030 to 12 noon. Amen. Amen. Next Sunday, we have our Kerry Reeser reception. John, when you were here, we were doing luncheon. We, we changed it to a reception over the last two years. Amen. And so partners from our community will come from their mission fields and their projects, their agencies, and share a bit of information to us that we might be able to avail ourselves of that information and plug in and do what we can to be of support to our community members who are in need and work with those partnering organizations. That'll be right after service, next Sunday the 14th. On the 21st after service, we're going to have what we're calling Getting to Know Antioch. And this is an opportunity for our new friends to, to stay after service and talk with the pastor and others and learn more about who Antioch is, what we believe, what we practice, how we're organized. And so we want to encourage you uh, to take part in that. Two more things. On the 28th, that's a Sunday, after service, we're going to have our free to read. We're reading The King and the Dragonflies. Let's read that now so that we're ready for that discussion on April the 28th. And don't forget now, on Saturday, April the 27th, at 9 o'clock, we have our church quarterly business meeting. So we need to make sure that we're ready Ministry leaders, be ready for your verbal reports. Amen. Amen. We, we may be, as some call us, the little church up on the hill. Oh, but we have a mighty mission. And we are, we are enthusiastic about doing the work of the Lord. And, and, and Colonel Wedges, after you just shared what you shared, I think you just inspired even more of us to, to, to make sure that we do all that we can. Even the little things matter. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Let me give him my all. Shall we bow together in prayer? Loving God, we thank you for all of your many blessings. We thank you, Lord, for indeed it is a blessing to be able to give. We have because you have blessed us and entrusted it to us. Bless now our tithes, our offerings that we bring, that they might bring a blessing and be a blessing to other people. Help us to make your love real and relevant by the way in which we share of our time, our talent, our treasure and meet the needs of your people in this community and around the world. We pray your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's prepare. Let's prepare for the word.
Let's prepare to respond to the word. Let's prepare to come to the table as we continue in worship. And Minister Pinckney comes to read our morning scripture. If you'd like to follow along as she reads aloud, it's Matthew chapter 19. Matthew 19, beginning at verse 16. Matthew 19, beginning with verse 16. Good morning. Good morning. Then someone came to him and said, Teacher, now we know who the teacher is. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, our Rabboni. What good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother. Also, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, I have kept all these, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you wish to be perfect, go, sell your possessions and give the money to the poor. You will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this word, he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the understanding of his holy word. Amen. Jesus came down from the cross. He gave a command to his disciples. To go into all the world preaching the gospel. Tell them who I am. Tell them even though they don't want to receive you. Even if they don't want to hear it, tell them. Tell them Even if they don't receive you Tell them Even if they don't believe you Oh, tell them for me Please tell them for me that I love them, that I came to let them know.
tell them when it seems you are forsaken tell them though it seems your earth is shaken oh tell them for me tell them for me that I love them and I came to let let them know Tell that lonely man On the streets and on the highway Compel them Even on the byway Tell them I can mend the broken hearted Restore the ones who were parted I came to let them know I came oh to let Oh, them no Oh, won't you tell them On the streets and on the highways Compel them Even on the byway Tell them I can mend the broken hearted Restore the ones who are parted I came to let all them know you bow with me in a moment of prayer consecrate me now to thy service Lord by the power of grace divine let my soul let our souls look up with a steadfast hope and our will be lost in thine in Jesus name we pray amen 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 let's go forward Let's go forward. Returning back to our scripture, verse 20. The young man said to him, I have kept all these. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you wish to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come. Follow me. When the young man heard this word, he went away grieving, grieving, for he had many possessions. Amen. 
You know, sometimes when we've had such a wonderful Lenten season as we did, a, a nurturing Holy Week and a, and a real grand Resurrection Sunday like we had last Sunday, we are kind of left feeling like, um, you know, what's next? You know, what's next? What is the next step? What do we do now? Yeah. And we have this dedicated young man here in the 19th chapter of Matthew. Had to flip back a couple of pages, amen. This young man uh, who we know was around between the ages of 21 to 28, who asked a similar kind of question about what's next. So I want to invite us as, as we just kind of have a communion meditation this morning. Let's find ourselves and our growth situations in this, in, in this interaction of this young man with Jesus the Christ. It's interesting to just kind of let our mind's eye imagine their interaction and, and even kind of bring it more towards a modern kind of feel. I, I, I could imagine him so respectfully saying basically, you know, Jesus, you know, I, I'm willing and I want to, but I don't know what to do. I'm willing and I want to, but I don't know what to do, but I feel that there is something that's not quite complete. There's something that's lacking. I don't have it all together, but I don't quite know what it is that I'm missing. And so he phrased it in his case, his situation in this way. He asked, what good deed must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, if you and I had that kind of opportunity in our own faith journey to talk with Jesus one-on-one, -on -one, I, I, I wonder what you might ask. I, I wonder what I might ask, if you will. I, I, I wonder if we also would say, I believe we would, Lord, I'm willing, I'm willing and I want to. And I know that you are able, but, but I don't know how do I participate in this. You know, what can I do to go forward in my faith? What can I do to go forward in my spirit-filled, fill, spirit-led and spirit-filled life? What can I do to go forward in my relationship with you? Well, let's stay in the text and, and find a solution here in the text. If we, if we just walk down through the text today, I know we didn't have Bible study this week. Pastor was on vacation, amen. So let's do a little Bible study right now. Stay in Matthew 19. If you're not looking at it, please look at it with me. Okay? Let's stay in the text. Let's, but let's skip past this verbal jousting that Jesus and the young man did over the word good. Let's get past that and let's get to, to, to Jesus' two responses. Are you with me there? Do you see it? Okay. So first Jesus says, I'm in the text, obey the commandments and you will enter into life. That's profound. But let's go further. Acting as if some commandments might be a little bit weightier than others, the young man asks, you see here, which ones? And so Jesus gave him a few of the Ten Commandments. Don't murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't lie. Honor your parents, your father, your mother. That's the one with the promise. And added, love your neighbors as yourself. Uh-huh. Now, let's be, you and me, be honest. Come on now, look at that list. Mm -hmm. My, my. Okay, use I statements. Okay, I'll do I statements. I, I, I think I would have been eliminated at this point uh, from, from, from the running. I, I, I would have been kicked out of contention. I, I, I failed in the playoffs. Amen. Uh, but this young man hangs right on in there, even having heard these commandments. And he says boldly, I have kept all these. Now, I'm looking at your faces. I, I see some of y'all have a look on your face right now, kind of disbelief. Like, come on, bruh. Really? You kept all those all your life? Come on now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You ain't praying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My, my. Yeah, but, 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 but the young man said, I kept all of these. And before we dismiss, note what Jesus' response is. Jesus, who knows all, did not correct the young man pointing out his flaws. Jesus did not dispute his claim to have kept the commandments. And in the Gospel of Mark, Mark reports that Jesus looked on him and loved him. 
Mm-hmm. I can say it this way then. Perhaps Jesus is, 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 is he's a fine, religious, good, living, decent citizen this young man is. The kind of person who is a credit to the community. Even loving his neighbor as himself. Which back then that kind of meant do uh, acts of public charity. Especially support the needs of widows and orphans. That's what they kind of focused on back then of loving your neighbor as yourself. And he had done this. All right. So you have done these things. So what's next? Here comes Jesus' second response. Mm -hmm. I'm in the text. Jesus says, if you, if you want or if you wish to be perfect, sell your possessions and give the money to the poor. Then you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Oh my, but what does perfect mean here in this particular text? Let me hasten with this. Perfect does not mean sinless here. Praise God. Amen. Perfect does not mean sinless for the word that is used here as perfect is also the word that was used of King David in the Greek translation of 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 4. And you know King James, or King David, was not perfect. Amen. You know he got into a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. And David was not without sin. So perfect here means, are you with me? Having undivided devotion. Mm -hmm. Amen. Undivided devotion, not sinless. Undivided devotion. In this young man's case, his riches were his impediment. Now, that's not the case for everybody. But he was getting stuck over his riches. Later in Matthew chapter 27, there here comes Joseph of Arimathea. You know, the, 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 the one who, who received Jesus' body and, and, and anointed his body after his death and, and, and put him in the borrowed tomb? That Joseph. Mm -hmm. Well, Joseph of Arimathea in Matthew 27 was called a rich man. He was a rich man who was also called the disciple of Jesus. What did you just say? Riches are not the issue for everybody. Amen. This young man had a possibility for growth. He could have been the next person to be a disciple like Joseph of Arimathea, but he could have been, but instead this, this young man, the scripture says, went away grieving mm -hmm. because he had a lot. What a blessing to have Dr. Douglas Hare in, in, the, in the commentary that's called Interpretation help us to unpack this a bit. He says it this way. What this man, young man minded was giving up what his wealth meant to him. He minded giving up what his wealth meant to him. What did it mean? It meant privilege. It meant status and economic power. He was not ready to surrender his comfortable and secure world for the unknown and frightening world into which Jesus was calling him. Yeah. Th this young man was identified by his wealth. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And he did not want to find a, a new identity. He knew what he was worth in his world. And by those standards, Jesus and his disciples were really worth nothing. Oh my. Mm -hmm. His wealth was his impediment. Well, I'm looking around at some people who I dearly love. And I'm asking us as I'm asking, I'm asking you as I'm asking of me, I'm asking us, what about us? What about us? So where are our next steps? Oh, we rejoiced in Holy Week. We, we felt the energies of Maundy Thursday and we appreciated Jesus' loving sacrifice, his commitment to make a choice to give his life. We, we, we cried and mourned over his death on Good Friday. We celebrated with joy his rising on Resurrection Sunday. But now what? What are our next steps in our faith? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to lean in and say this because this is really, to me, the big lesson of this text. I told you I was going to do like Bible study. This is like the big lesson of the text. Loose yourself from what has you bound. Say that again. 
Loose yourself Loose. from the stuff mm -hmm. that has you bound. Yeah. And that, my sisters and brothers, is a life lasting, lifelong endeavor that only God can make possible in us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Letting go of earthly stuff and receiving heavenly treasure. Wow. Following Jesus. Amen. That's some good living. Mm -hmm. And it's challenging. I dare not fool myself and I dare not want to fool you. It's challenging. For this young man here in the text, those costs were just too high for him. And so he kind of drew a line, if you will. Mm -hmm. yep. He drew a line and said, you know what? I'm just, I'm just not able to go all that way. And I invite myself and I invite you to consider as we look at this text, do you draw a line in your faith? Are there in fact places that you are willing to go but you'll only go thus far and no further. You know our growth. You know our deepening in our relationship with God can get stuck. And being stuck, it begins to decline. And it begins to get stuck and decline at the points of our arrogance. Mm hmm where we don't think we need any fixing or we got it all together, arrogance. They get stuck and they begin to decline at the places also of our fear. Yeah. I'm going to come back to fear in about two minutes. But first, let's go here. Four areas. Just four. There's plenty more. Four areas where we may actually draw the line in our faith and faith development. Money, number one. Jesus preached more about money than he did love or peace or joy. And some of them all together, there was more teaching about money than all those combined. Money. If I draw the line at money. I will give this much. No more. I will give. But only under certain circumstances and conditions. And you know what? As soon as those certain circumstances and conditions are not satisfied, I'm cutting it off. As soon as I'm no longer happy with the church, because y'all used the red hymnals and I wanted the blue. Mm -hmm. As soon as I'm no longer happy with the pastor, as soon as I'm no longer happy with somebody's church, another church member who took my spot, sat in my pew, stepped on my toe. Mm -hmm. I'm being silly, but I stopped giving, and that's serious. I'm being serious, so I've got to be serious about that because your giving has nothing to do with who you like or what you don't like or dislike. Amen. Your Amen. giving is about your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 That's between you and God. Number two, energy. I'm going to draw the line. I've only got so much energy. So I, I would, but, but I'm not going to do this. Yeah. Well, well. I know we got that meeting on Saturday morning, but I'm not going to be there. I'm not working on that. Mm -hmm. I only got so much energy. I can't volunteer. I is tired. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> and the myth of scarcity is active in your life as if you have just a few crumbs left and you better hold on to those. Mm -hmm. Because if you use up those, God doesn't have any more for you. Where anybody who's on the path of becoming healthy, they would tell you if you just get active and use that energy and keep going, you will train your body and you will have more energy. Amen. Amen. Your energy will decline when you sit still mm -hmm. on your pew duster. And for the sake of the choir behind me, I'm not going to show you what your pew duster is. Uh -huh. Amen. But if you sit around on your pew duster all the time and that's all you do, you have declining energy. But when you get up and you get active, I'll say the I statements. When I get up and I get active, then the Lord blesses me with more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where do we draw the line? Time. I don't have time. Mm-mm. 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 Mm -mm. And the funny thing about the human condition is we will make time for what we want to do. 
Amen. Just like we will pay for what we want to pay for. We will buy, my mother used to say it this way, we will buy what we want and beg for what we need. Mm -hmm. I went too far. Come on back. Time. I would teach this, but I don't have time. I would chaperone that. I ain't got time. Brother Jim, I know you've been bothering me. I would sing in the choir, but y'all rehearsal too much. I don't have time. Amen. <laughs> Number four. I went past my two minutes. Let me finish. Come on in here. <laughs> Number four, it could be other things. We might be able to say, I'm, I'm willing to go on the mission trip. I, I'll serve the homeless. But watch this. I won't revisit the hurts and the haunts of my past to heal and become healthier and whole. That's where I draw the line. Mm -hmm. I ain't going back to revisit that and work through that so that I can be released of that and I can go on in Jesus' name. The lines we draw represent our fear. And we need some lessons in being fearless. Well, before Jesus gave this teaching to the young man, he had already talked about being fearless. Prior to this text, Jesus had shared that, that we who would become great should be like a little child. Mm -hmm. Their faith is focused forward. It's faced forward towards their future. It's, it's not a coincidence that, 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 that we learn to walk and we learn to run and we learn to ride bikes as children when we were fearless. Children are focused more on what they have to gain rather than what they have to lose. Mm -hmm. They're fearless. Yes. Walking, getting up, walking meant being higher, reaching more, getting along faster. And then they began to run. Oh, boy. And you had to put on your track shoes to catch them. Yes, yes, yes. Them toddlers move fast, Brother Kyle. Amen. Yes. And it meant then, then we got a little older and we got a little coordinated. And we got started riding a bike. And once we could ride a bike, oh, that was freedom. The wind in your hair and your afro and your pigtails just gone. Yeah. Oh, what a blessing to get up and go. But then as we got older, we, 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 we began to fear what we might lose. When, when, we, we, when we were younger, we didn't worry. If we fell, we got up, dusted ourselves off, cried a little bit, got a Band-Aid, and went on back and played some more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fear comes later. And the more we fear losing what we think we have, Risking goes out the window. Yeah. Reaching goes out the window. Reaching forward, even our innovation goes out the window. It can all grind to a halt. The message is simple. You and I have got to learn again to press on. We got to learn again to press forward. We got to learn again anew afresh to trust God all the more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For either we are moving forward in faith or we are losing ground. There really is no standing still in our faith development. Standing still for the individual and the church is an illusion. For our Christian journey is actually a repetitive process. It's a repetitive process of God streamlining and purifying and our yielding and our following. Being in this world is like being in the kitchen back when my dad would have a whole mess of catfish that he wanted to fry. Mm -hmm. Sister Mary Ann, you don't know nothing about that. But, 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 but dad would get into, the, in, into there and, and that, that, that get that hot oil going, grease, you know, and that smell of fish got everywhere. That's what it's like being in the world. The smell of that fish, John, got everywhere. It got into the hair, got into the clothes, and if you forgot to close your closet door, it was all in your closet, it all in your clothes in the closet. Mom would come in fussing and fighting, saying, why didn't you close the doors? Mm -hmm. Now I got to go back and rewash and clean all this. It's in your curtains. That's the way it is living in this world. Mm -hmm. In this sin-sick world, you're going to get the smell of life on you. And so we have to repent. We have to pray. We have to fast. We have to study God's word. It is a repetitive process. And some of the stuff of life gets baked on us. It gets caked yep. on us because life can kick where it hurts. Amen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so God has to remove some of the layers of life off of us. Mm -hmm. God does some pruning away of some bad habits here. God does some removing of, of certain kinds of taste and, and things there. And God gives enough fire not to hurt you, but to burn off the impurities off of you and from within you. 
And then God gives some ministry opportunities over here and there's many victories won over there. Mm -hmm. But we, in faith and arrogance, draw the line. We must fight our inclination to stop God's processes of our growth. We're shutting down and settling. We're shutting down and coasting far too soon. When God has so much more in store. Yes, yes. So what's next? Mm -hmm. What's next? Erase those lines that we have drawn. Erase the lines acting as if God is not able. For surely God is able. Amen. Amen. Erase those self-imposed lines, if you will. It will be great. If we would become great, we must go forward in faith like a little child. And we've got to continue in the process of growing and developing. Mm -hmm. We ourselves recognize that something is wrong if, a, if, if, if growth and development stops and a child never gets any bigger or more developed than a, of a two-year-old toddler. Mm -hmm. We know something's not right. Mm -hmm. We know something's not quite right well. if, 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 if the development stops at the level of a preteen. Well. Amen. We, we know that something is not right if in our development as a person, as a human being, we stop our development and our growth as a young adult. But why do we accept a stop in our spiritual development and growth as a toddler yeah, or, yeah. Or, 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 or as a youth mm -hmm. or as a preteen or as a young adult? God has so much more in store. If we're at a toddler age, that's all right. You got to start somewhere. But it's time at some point to stop crawling low down there where it feels safe and slow. Mm -hmm. And it's time to push up off the ground and it's time to begin to walk. Even if you waddle a little bit, you're walking. Amen. And if you're already walking slow and steady, that's a wonderful thing. But sometimes it's time to pick up the pace a little bit. Amen. 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 And if you're running, running, I've been running with Jesus for 20 years. Amen. That's wonderful. But, but have, you, have, you, have you stretched out your wings and have you taken to the air? Amen. It just might be time to fly in your life. Well, Pastor, I've been flying around, but have you been flying down low? It's time to soar like an eagle. For God will raise you up on eagle's wings. and It's time to go forward in faith. It's a time for increase. It's time to stop hindering our faith and holding it back. This is God's leading. If God is leading you, why are we so afraid? What is there possibly to be afraid of? I'm trying to stop. It's, 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 it's time to stop being a fan in the bleachers and get out on the field in the court. Amen. It's time to stop being a God admirer and become a true follower. Amen. It's time to be fully committed. Time to stop drawing the line on your relationship with God when God does not draw a line of limitation on you. It's time to accept the ever-increasing gift of salvation. It's time for a more undivided devotion to God. Next steps. It's time. We're not going to be perfect in our surrender, but we can be more and more undivided and more and more devoted in our surrender unto God. It's time. May even be past time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's an old hymn, I Surrender All. And I pray it has more meaning for us today. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Would you stand with me? Would you stand with me? It's hymn number 396 in your hymnals. Would you sing it from the depths of your soul? Meditate on those words. Let it be a prayer to you today. And as we stand and as we sing, the doors of the church are open and the invitation is extended. Somebody may be ready to take a step forward in faith to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. You've been contemplating it. You've been considering it. But you know it's time. It's time. Perhaps you've already been baptized, but you need a church family, and you've been enjoying Antioch, and you want to come and become a part of Antioch. Why? Because the Spirit says so. It's time. It's time. So as we stand and as we sing, Candice for baptism, we invite you to come.
under your Christian experience to join the church, we invite you to come. If the Spirit says come, will you come? All to Jesus. I surrender. Freely, freely give. Freely give. I will ever love and trust. I surrender. you to moments of silent meditation with every head bowed, every eye closed. Why? Just to have your time with the Lord as the music plays so softly. Just let the Lord speak to your heart and to your mind. I want to share with you this encouragement in this time of meditation. We know in these bodies we won't be sinless. But praise God for progress. We are sinning less. We know in these bodies we, we won't be perfect. But we can become more devoted. Less divided in our devotion to God. So as we prepare to partake of communion this morning, I want to invite us to consider our next step in serving the Lord. 
and growing in relationship with the Lord. Before we eat the bread or drink the cup, I invite us to recommit ourselves to focus, to even sacrifice for our spiritual growth. I want to invite you to fill in this blank. Add your words, your verbs to the following declaration. Here it is. As I remember Jesus' loving sacrifice, I recommit myself to be or to more. As I remember Jesus' loving sacrifice, I recommit myself to blank more. Perhaps for you, what's your word there? Perhaps it's believe more. What's your word there? Study God's word more. Recommit to give of my time, talent, and treasure more. What's your more? To wait, listen, and follow more? To trust and obey more? As you remember Jesus' loving sacrifice, what do you recommit yourself to do more? Remember Jesus' loving sacrifice and God's power to resurrect, recreate, and renew. So let's prepare to partake of the blessing of Holy Communion. Amen. 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 The blood will never lose its power. that Jesus serve you. thankful we are 
that this, the first Sunday in April, the first, first Sunday after Easter, we have this opportunity to come and dine at the table, the table that Jesus' love and sacrifice prepares and makes available for each and every one of us. What a blessing that we can partake and receive of God's love again and again. And the table continues to be replenished for God's love will never end. It surely does not fail. Surely God loves us. Amen. Let us rejoice in that blessing. Yes, Lord. Minister Pinkley, would you offer a word of prayer? Father God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit of the one and only living God, we thank you for this day and for this time and for this place. We thank you for blessing each and every person here. We thank you, Lord God, that your spirit is going from heart to heart and breast to breast. I pray, Lord God, that what we have here, we will take with us when we leave. And as we partake of this table, and remember that the sacrifices that the Lord Jesus made for us, that we will not neglect to make sacrifices for him. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Praise God, all have been served in our congregation. And as I offer the words of institution, I would also serve here at the table that we all might partake and eat the bread together and drink the cup together. The scriptures tell us that on that very night that our Lord and Savior was betrayed, he sat at table with his disciples and there they supped together. And as they dined, the scriptures tell us that Jesus took bread he broke it. He gave thanks for it. He offered it to his disciples at the table as he offers it to the disciples at this table, saying, take and eat my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Ministering in Jesus' name, we serve you the bread. scriptures tell us that after they had finished the supper Jesus took the cup and gave thanks for it he offered it to his disciples this cup represents his blood shed for us we have a new covenant through his shed blood ministering in Jesus name we offer you the cup. To the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest old valley. What a blessing that in our Blood. togetherness we can receive anew of God's love. And so with joy, with joy, my sisters and brothers, let's take the bread and eat all of it in Jesus' name. And then let us take the cup. And let us drink together.
gave well. It will never, never lose. Well, we're not going to stop the song. I just want to jump in and say they, in the scriptures tell us they, after they had dined, they sang a hymn and they went out. And so we go out singing together. May God bless you and may God keep you as we go forward, always forward in faith. Amen. Go oh, to the lowest valley. Go oh, the blood. Go oh, that gives me strength. From day, it will never. Gives me strength. 